Hey guys, Michael from Concord Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to determine if a bond is nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. Let's start with just a brief definition of each. So, covalent bonds are bonds that exist between two nonmetals, and then ionic bonds are bonds that exist between a metal and a nonmetal. So, covalent bonds can be broken down into two smaller categories nonpolar and polar. Nonpolar covalent bonds are those that involve uh, equal or nearly equal sharing of electrons, and then polar covalent bonds involves a unequal sharing of electrons, which will lead to partial positive and partial negative charges. The way to determine whether a bond is nonpolar, polar, or ionic is this is first check if it's um, if there's a metal and nonmetal, automatically it makes it ionic, and then if it's two nonmetals, then it makes it covalent. Then once you know it's covalent, look at the electronegativity differences. If it's 0.4 or less, so it may be nonpolar. If it's between 0.4 to 1.8, it'll be polar covalent. And I have the electronegativity tables right here. I also have the separation that shows you the nonmetals are on the right-hand side of, of this cut, and then the metals are on the left-hand side. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So we have to determine if the following bonds are nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. Well, let's first check if these are covalent or ionic. NO. N and O are both nonmetals, so we know that it has to be covalent. Now let's take a look at the electronegativity difference. The difference is 3.5 minus 3, so that would be electronegative, have a difference of 0.5, and 0.5 is going to make this polar covalent. Alright, next one, LiCl. Let's just check whether it's ionic or covalent first. Li is a metal, and Cl is a nonmetal, so since it's metal and nonmetal, then it has to be ionic. Next one, C and H. C is here and H is here, so although H is on the left side of that cut, it is a, a nonmetal. Um, so C and H are both nonmetals, meaning they're going to be they're going to be covalent, and the difference is 0 0.4. Cause it's 2.5 minus 2.5 minus 2.1, so 0.4. Uh, so that would make it nonpolar covalent. So this is this is a pretty important one to remember. You're you're probably going to see C and H bonds a lot in in chemistry. So just remember C and H bonds and generally C and H molecules are nonpolar. Next one S and S. Since these are these are the same elements, they're going to have the exact same electronegativity. That means the electronegativity difference is going to be just zero. And if it's zero, then it's going to be nonpolar covalent. Okay, next one, CA, CA and BR. Uh, CA is over here. You can it's a it's a metal, and then and then BR is over here. It's a nonmetal. So since it's metal and nonmetal, then it has to be ionic. All right, last one, SI and P. SI is over here. And P is over here, so you have two nonmetals, meaning it's going to be covalent. So then we look at the, the difference, and the difference is 0.3, 2.2 minus 1.9. So 0.3 would fall in the category of nonpolar covalent. And that's how you would determine if a bond is nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. To start by determining whether it's covalent or ionic based on this, these criteria, and then if it's covalent, Look at the electronegativity difference to determine if it's polar covalent or nonpolar covalent. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.